before we move on we need to wish somebody it's farah's birthday so let's all wish farah a very happy birthday from team b sides to you a very happy birthday farah many many happy returns of the day all right so coming up next to talk about open source tool to help uh, with automation research and analysis of android application let's give it up for sparsh kulshresht and shashank bhartwal from cloudsec okay so welcome everyone and thank you so much for attending this session today we'll be talking about pawning android apps at scale right uh, in this research we exploited multiple vulnerabilities uh, in the backend services which are powering these android applications uh, but before we get into the research and the findings i want to give you a little background about how we reach these findings so it started with a project that we've been doing we call it bvigil and uh, bvigil is a apk scanner uh, but it's not a regular apk scanner the whole the whole theme of bvigil is to not to scan an apk from a vapt point of view but rather scan an apk from the data collection and indexing point of view so can so that we can do uh, more and more reconnaissance on the data so with that i would like to start the talk uh, i am sparsh and uh, i have shashank with me we are both security researchers at cloudsec we are part of the r&d team which takes care of the cloudsec asm product and the further acknowledgement of this project goes to my other awesome teammates at cloudsec uh, who are part of this project and these are the things that we're going to cover today we'll start with the motivation behind this project and then we'll look at uh, some of the problems which we saw in the current mobile ecosystem and then we'll look at our innovation that is the our solution to these problems we call it bvigil and then we'll have a overview of the data we have indexed so far in our inventory and then shashank will take you through the research and the findings and and we are also launching an open source tool today by which you can have access to the data we have indexed so far and hopefully we'll be having some time for the qna so internet wide data gathering and scanning so we as a security community have been doing internet wide data gathering and scanning for a long now uh, we are not the first one to do so and we do it in order to identify widespread vulnerabilities and misconfigurations and patch them before the bad guys get their hands on them and uh, we have a lot of tools and projects in this category but i have mentioned these four tools here which i believe have made a real impact on our community uh first up we have shodan shodan is a, a search engine for internet connected devices and the most awesome thing about shodan are the shodan filters so using the shodan filters you can correlate an ip to a ssl or or you can map out a specific kind of uh, service on the internet uh, which is very cool and next up we have project sonar by rapid7 they also used to scan the internet uh, for a particular service and after that they used to post this data online project sonar has been discontinued for some reason but the data which they have provided there are a lot of tools which are built on top of that data set and we have wayback machine which is also known as the digital archive of the internet wayback machine is collecting the data of web applications from the internet for a while now and census.io which is also very similar to shodan so while you can see we have a lot of tools which are collecting the data of uh, the web applications or the networks data but when it comes to mobile applications we are not really doing much of the data collection there so that is why we chose mobile applications for our research now let's look at the look at some of the problems we saw in the current mobile ecosystem the biggest problem that we saw is that the huge amount of android applications which are out there so this is according to a report we have more than 14 million applications spread ac across 80 plus app stores and growing every day and most of these applications never pass through a security test uh, and we also have uh, mobile only startups and i'm talking about unicorn startups here so a mobile only startup is a startup which offer most of its functionality through a mobile application they don't have a web application at all uh, and the next problem we saw is very well known that tendered applications are notorious for hard coded assets and secrets now look at the amount of assets you can extract from a single applications a uh, single application you you have urls you have uh, parameters you have endpoints now when you multiply the assets that you get from a single applications to the total number of applications which are out there the resulting data is is insane so it's a lot of data and this is where we believe that 
there is a hidden attack surface which we are trying to uncover with this research. And the last but not the least problem that we saw is the limited availability of comprehensive data sets and investigative tools. So like we have Shodan for web applications and network where you can correlate multiple things. But when it comes to Android applications, there are no such tools. So for example, you found a, you found a zero day in a popular library, which is very popular among Android developers. You literally have no way in order to identify what other applications are there which are using the same library. So these are some of the problems that we saw. And we came up with BeVigil, a solution. And this is, in a nutshell, what we did. So the step one of our research was collection of mobile applications. So we used uh, Play Store for the majority of those applications, and we use some third-party app stores as well. So right now, we have indexed more than a million Android applications. The step two was decompiling all these applications. So for that, we used JEDX. And after decompiling, once we had the source code of all these applications, we did some static scanning as well. But the focus was on identifying more and more assets and secrets from the source code. So for that, we came up with a list of more than 250 uh, regex patterns. And we ran it on the source code of all these applications. And that way, we identified a lot of assets. And the last and the most important step of this research was providing this data set along with the search functionality to the security community. Because we alone cannot fix all the bugs. So this is the pie chart of secrets and API keys we have indexed so far in our inventory. So here you can see, I don't know if it is visible in the back, we have AWS API keys, we have GitHub auth tokens, uh, we have Razor Pay API keys. Some, some of these uh, API keys were very critical. In fact, some of these are capable enough to pawn an entire organization. So when we see these many API keys coming in, we decided to report them. But reporting 1.6 million hard-coded API keys and that to manually was n not an easy task. In fact, I don't think it's even possible. So for, in order to report them, we set up an entire reporting pipeline. We built a validator API. The validator API takes a token or an API key, determine what kind of token it is, check if it is valid or not. And if it is valid, an uh, automatic report will be generated, and it will be sent to the developer or the respective organization. So, so far, we have reported uh, to more than 600 different type of organizations with the findings just related to API keys and secrets. Uh, but this talk is not really about the API keys and secrets. D this talk is more about the assets that we have uh, indexed so far. So uh, in, uh, from 1 million applications, we have indexed more than 294 million assets. And this is a pie chart of some of the assets. You can see we have URLs here. So, like we do, like we use a Wayback Machine, uh, we give, provide a URL and we get all the associated URLs with that uh, particular web application. In the same way, this data set can also be used. And you can see we have file names, we have REST API endpoints, uh, we have hosts, we have file paths. I don't need to explain the importance of finding these assets. I think the talk we had today in the morning have given uh, the importance of these assets along with the examples of how they can be exploited. So these are some of the assets that we have in our inventory. Apart from these, we have more assets. We have 1.3 million unique subdomains. And uh, it has been integrated with 15 plus open source subdomain enumeration tools. So if you are using subfinder, AMAS, or if you are using find domain, you are sorted because BVigil is already there as a source in these uh, subdomain enumeration tools. What you have to do, you just need to add your BVigil API key in the configuration file, and you are sorted. So uh, this is a graph of the cloud storage buckets that we have indexed in our inventory. Here you can see we have close to 3 lakh S3 buckets. So how many of you use Gray Hat Warfare? to enumerate buckets, or it's a searchable data set for open S3 buckets, yeah. yeah. So in a similar way, you can use that as well. Uh, so I was comparing the data we have here uh, to the data of uh, uh, Gray Hat Warfare, and this is slightly higher than the data of Gray Hat Warfare. Not all of them are misconfigured, but as I said, we also have a validator API, so I can tell you that a lot of them are misconfigured. OK, so this is a pie chart of other kind of assets we have in our inventory. These are not directly exploitable, 
but when you find an asset like this, there are chances that uh, there is an API key or an auto token hard coded in the source code along with these URLs. So, like we have AWS apps in GraphQL URL here. A lot of times, in fact, the most of the times I have seen, whenever I found a GraphQL URL, I will find an API key as, uh, there as well, which can be used to uh, query the GraphQL endpoint. And we also have Amazon Execute API URL. So, uh, so what I'm saying, th these are not directly exploitable, right? So don't go and report them blindly to the customer or to the, uh, to the bug bounty program you're hunting on. You need a story to build up. You need to give the guy a context how you reach the fi findings and how they are impactful. So I found on a, uh, a, just a few days back, I was hunting on a program. And I just searched their uh, top level domain on the B Visual search. I'll give a, a demo of that as well. I just searched the top level domain. Uh, their official app came up. And while I was looking at the URLs they have in their official application, uh, there was one uh, AWS execute API URL. So nothing can be done right now. So I searched that URL on GitHub, and I found a repo. That repo was posted by an employee. In that repo, authorization tokens were there, which can be used uh, to access this uh, API, and I got access to some of the endpoints. And with that, I was able to execute uh, some, uh, some actions on that API. Uh, now that you know, and one more thing I would like to mention here, that there is a supply chain running on top of Android applications. Uh, there are companies which have Android applications for their employee only, or there are companies uh, which have a separate application for their uh, vendors or for their distributors. And later in the chain, uh, these vendors have more applications. So uh, I'll explain this with a finding, with a security incident we came across. So one time uh, we found, let's say there are two companies, company A and company B. So what we found, we found the credentials of company A were hard-coded in the source code of Android application of company B. Right? And when we investigated on this issue, we, we, we found out that both of these applications were developed by the same software development company. And later, these applications were posted on Play Store by the respective organization accounts. So now, if you look at this finding from a black box point of view, or from a bounty hunter's point of view, there is literally no way for him to identify uh, that th th there is a loophole in the systems of company A, because some developer hard-coded their credentials in a different application. Uh, now that you have seen what kind of data we have, uh, the question is how can you have access to this data? So there are two ways by which you can have access to this data. One is through the code search functionality, and the other one is through an API. It's an open access API. You just can you can go and sign up, and you can have access to that API. So this is an example of the code search functionality. Uh, in this screenshot, I have searched for URL parameter. I search for URL parameter as it is well known for vulnerabilities like SSRF, open redirect, etc. In a similar way, you can search for any kind of URL. It can be, it can be any parameter. It can be uh, any company keyword as well. And uh, the finding that I was talking about, that's exactly how we how we in, uh, came across that finding. We just searched for the company keyword here, and all the vulner all the applications which have the mention of that company in their source code came up, and in one of that application, we found those credentials. Uh, the other way to have access to this data set is through uh, API. We call it OSINT API. And for that, I would like to invite Shashank, who will tell you more about the OSINT API, and he will also take you through the research and the findings. Thank you, Spash. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so I'll be taking over the presentation from now on. So as you just see, uh, the code search is one way to have access to this data. Another way through which you can have access to millions of organized assets is through the BVGIL OSINT API. Uh, so we have created an API over the data set of uh, millions of organized assets we have. And it is uh, publicly uh, freely available for everyone to use. Uh, more details about the API can be found in the uh, links mentioned here. So now let's have a look at some of the features, or uh, I should say some of the endpoints that are offered by the BVGIL OSINT API. So you can see that we have a bunch of endpoints here, the world list, host, uh, URL params, subdomains, et cetera. So one such interesting endpoint that I would like to highlight here is the apps endpoint. So it allows security researchers uh, to extract or to enumerate all the 
Android packages or Android uh, uh, applications that are associated with the domain name. Uh, so we, disc uh, we observe that a lot of researchers uh, do not even look at the source code of Android application until and unless it is mentioned in the scope uh, of the target. And due to which, a lot of assets that are embedded inside the Android applications are never discovered. And they go untested and uh, leaving room for a lot of vulnerabilities. So that is why we decided to create this endpoint, which simply takes in a domain name and gives you all the related Android packages. right? And then once you have enumerated the Android packages, then you can make use of other API endpoints. Like you can, uh, through the wordless endpoint, you can generate a wordless out of an Android package, which you can use for fuzzing. And uh, you can also extract URL parameters, subdomains, and URLs from an Android package. So another such interesting endpoint that I would like to highlight here with an example uh, of the actual API call is the S3 keyword search. So this uh, endpoint allows you uh, to enumerate all the S3 bucket URLs that we have uh, discovered in more than 1 million Android applications, which have a common pattern or a common keyword in them. So during some VAPT engagements, we encountered that a lot of companies have patterns in their S3 bucket name. So let's say the company name is ABC. So uh, they might have S3 bucket URLs that start like ABC hyphen prod, ABC hyphen resources, and you get the idea, right? They have patterns uh, in their S3 bucket names. Uh, so that's why we have this endpoint here, uh, which simply takes in the keyword or a pattern and gives you a list of uh, all the S3 bucket URLs uh, that we have in our inventory. So in this example, we have searched for the healthcare keyword, and uh, it has listed all the S3 bucket URLs which has S3 uh, in their URL or name. Right. OK. So uh, now, we, now you have seen that we have a lot of data. We have uh, more than 290 million assets. And we have a very handy API through which we can extract all these assets. Now the bigger question is, how can we make use of this data? Uh, how can we utilize all these assets to uh, do vulnerability research or to scan the internet, right? So one way through which we, can, uh, we could think of utilizing this, this data is uh, through smart fuzzing. And uh, so we can use all the collected data points uh, to conduct an internet-wide scan uh, on the internet for vulnerabilities, right? And, and by smart fuzzing, I mean by using the correct endpoint and using the correct URL parameters, right? So we decided to use this methodology of smart fuzzing uh, to conduct an internet-wide scan for vulnerabilities, for which uh, we chose all the URLs that we have identified in uh, millions of Android applications as our target. But as you all know, that Android applications can have uh, some targets or some URLs that are not useful for us, like Facebook URLs, uh, WhatsApp business links, and Instagram pages links, right? So that is not what we want to test or spam. So that is why. Uh, first, we filtered all those targets, uh, all those URLs, and uh, once we have a complete uh, validated list of all the targets we can scan, this is the structure of fuzzing that we followed. So for every validated target, so let's say in this case, uh, Netflix.com, we first use the OSINT API to enumerate all the Android packages that are associated with that domain name. So in the example, you can see here that we have uh, shown like five of them. So once we have these packages, we can again utilize the OSINT API to enumerate all the Android URL parameters that we have discovered inside these Android packages. Right? So once that is done, now we have uh, the correct target. We have the correct endpoints to hit. And we also have potential correct uh, parameters that we can fuzz. And now we can fuzz them with uh, any payload we want. So back in the time when we were doing this research, when we were collecting apps, the log4j vulnerability striked in and shocked the internet. And uh, since most of the Android applications are written in Java, and uh, also the log4j uh, was a Java logging utility, and the fact that more than 70% mobile applications are never tested for vulnerabilities. So we assume that a major portion of uh, the mobile application ecosystem could be vulnerable to this. So that is why we decided to pick log4j um, uh, to test the internet for, right? Uh, so these are the snippets of the HTTP requests that we sent uh, to each target to scan them for vulnerabilities. For each target, we send uh, both get and post to not miss out any, any functionality. 
And uh, you can see here that for every enumerated parameter through OSINT API, we were fuzzing the parameters with the uh, log4j payload. And you may also notice that all the payloads have a very customized value. All the payloads are different from the rest. Uh, and that is because in every log4j payload, we were putting uh, the host name Java environment variable for, for validation. And apart from that, you're also putting in the target name, the target we are fuzzing, and also the parameter and header we are fuzzing. And the reason behind uh, putting this information in a payload was uh, because a lot of times we are encountering that we are sending the payload to domain A, and we are getting a hit from domain B. And, uh, and that is when we were not able to track, OK, where is this hit is coming from? So that is why we decided to put uh, the target information as well, so that we can easily have track of where we actually sent and from where we got the uh, hit from. And to correctly identify which of the parameter or which header is actually vulnerable, which is being logged, we try to put uh, the parameter name and the header name in the uh, payload as well. And in the post request, you can see that we are sending all the parameters in the payloads in the JSON format. So the reason behind that is uh, a lot of Android applications uh, rely on APIs to communicate with the backend server. And since JSON is a pretty uh, common data exchange format uh, in APIs, so that is why we decided to use that. So once we rolled these, all these requests out to all the targets, uh, the outcome of this research was pretty interesting. We identified more than 300 uh, confirmed remote code executions and uh, more than 400 SSRF uh, and open redirects. We used the host name validation, the host name reflection technique to validate whether or not it's actually an RCE or just a false positive. And we checked the HTTP hits to identify the SSRFs and open redirects. And the 300 RCEs we are talking about here were from every sector you can think of, banking, transportation, healthcare, education, everywhere. In every sector, we identified multiple remote code executions. Uh, so the impact was pretty huge here. And at the time when we did this research, we only had indexed 80,000 applications and nearly 1 million of URLs. And now we have 1 million Android applications. So now you can think of what could be an updated number and how big the problem is. And since this issue was big, so we decided to uh, disclose the issues responsibly to the authorities of respective organizations and followed up with them until the issue is completely mitigated. Yep. So uh, this was about the research. And uh, we have a little gift for the security community here. Uh, so bvigil CLI is a command line utility and a Python library that is built as a wrapper over the OSINT API that provides you easy access to extract all these assets from the OSINT API. Uh, more details regarding the usage and installation can be uh, found in the link mentioned here. So let's have a quick demo of it. So now let's say uh, you want to enumerate subdomains for any domain, let's say netflix.com, right? So you will run bvigil CLI enum subdomains and pass in the domain name netflix.com. And it will give you all the subdomains that we have encountered in 1 million Android applications that are related to Netflix. And um, if you have an automated recon flow, then you can make use of the bvigil Python library to achieve the same thing. And uh, with that, we move to takeaways and conclusion. So in this research, we tried to uncover a very uncommon yet uh, very important attack surface that, uh, through bvigil, which is mobile application attack surface which a lot of researchers uh, tend to ignore until it is mentioned in the scope. And uh, looking at the number of API keys and misconfigurations we have discovered so far, it will be safe to say that hard-coded credentials, vulnerabilities, misconfigurations are everywhere, and the internet is broken. And the only way through which we can uh, fix all these issues is uh, by collaboration of security researchers and engineers. And in the end, we encourage all the security researchers here to uh, utilize the bvigil CLI or OSINT API uh, in their daily, daily uh, enumeration process to power up their recon. So with that, uh, I would like to end this talk here, and we are up for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Hi, guys. Thanks for the great session. Here, in front of you. Hey, hi. Yeah, hi. So I just had one question. Like, it's like kind of a database from where we can extract uh, information uh, about the app, right? 
So do we have any option where we can maybe go and debug live applications? Suppose some Android application is not listed in your database. It's not present in the application or the tool you have prepared. So is there any option for us that we can go and maybe debug uh, that application at that time? Yeah, uh, so we have a website called bvigil.com. So you can go over there, sign up, and you can uh, put, uh, scan uh, your application for free. You can upload your application there. Okay, so that's, that the whole process is automated there? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. All okay, the decompilation and extraction of assets is all automated. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 great talk, first of all. So I have one question. So in the product lifecycle, uh, usually there are multiple apps released as a part of uh, product lifecycle. So BVGL tracks all those apps or like what's the uh, develop, uh, what's the update cycle of BVGL? Uh, yeah, do we we have a function of uh, we have a feature called versioning of application. It's not there on the prod right now. It will be there, but yeah, we do track all the versions of our application. So there is a hard coded key in a t older version. Uh, you will be able to find it. You will be able to see the report of each version separately. Thanks. And yeah, we came up with this idea when we encountered that some of the applications were leaving leaking their API keys in version one and they removed them in the version 2. So that's when the idea is right. Yeah. Hi, Thank guys. Um, great presentation. So we, um, um, what BVigil is doing, right, um, extracting assets from the apps, right? So I just wanted to ask, are we using hard-coded manual regex patterns, or are we implementing some kind of machine learning or something like that in it? No, it's, uh, we, we are using RipCrap. Uh, so it takes a regex pattern, and it identifies that pattern in the source code. So it's just that. No ML is there. All right, thanks.